Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another miniature masterpiece. We've been listening to a lot of Shostakovich recently, in particular going through my rundown of the best versions of all of the symphonies. But, you know, he wrote a tremendous amount of music, a lot of which we don't know or doesn't get heard. There are suites from all of the film scores, most of which were not put together by him. But one of the most interesting of these little pieces is the suite from his opera, Katarina Ismailova, which is actually Lady Macbeth, Lady Macbeth of Mitsensk. It's the same opera. He renamed it when he revised it later on. Um, after he tried to neutralize some of the criticisms that had almost led to him being shot and killed by the Communist Party in the 1930s at Stalin's behest because of the opera. It's a wonderful piece in its original version, and the suite comes from the original version. There are amazing orchestral entracts and interludes scattered throughout the piece, and the suite, at least the regular suite, has five of them, and they make a fairly substantial a fairly substantial list of stuff. Well, one of them is extremely long. One of them is nine minutes long. But when you add it all up, let's see, you get here, five plus nine is 14, 15, about 17, 18 minutes of music in five little movements with one big one in the middle. And it's an extraordinary opera um, that's achieved a measure of popularity these days. But of course, the experience of writing it was so horrible that Shostakovich sort of gave up opera. It was too risky. And he turned happily for us to symphonies and concertos and other things. But one of the wonderful things about the suite is that we do get this fantastic um, example of Shostakovich's earlier style before the Fifth Symphony, before he tried to somehow accommodate himself to the demands of the government. And it's not that his music got worse, it got different. I think it's absolutely wrong. When a genius has to accommodate, he accommodates himself in a genius -y way. And Shostakovich was a genius. So the music isn't any less good. It's just less like it was. And how was it? Well, it was harsher. It was sharper. It was biting and sarcastic and more bitter. And oh my goodness, it was fun. It was like a nice tart sorbet. And the wonderful thing about this little interlude, which is the fourth of them in the series of five, it's only a minute and 35 seconds or so long, but it, it, it really does give you exactly, it encapsulates his early music in a wonderful, wonderful way. At least the quick early music, the slow music is something else entirely. But in the quick music, we have this manic energy, the, the idea of, popular music run amok. It's based on very simple melodic materials, but somehow the idea of, of a, a happy gala free-for-all doesn't sound quite right. There's this undercurrent of, of threat, of menace to the whole thing that's really quite extraordinary. I mean, it really is marvelous. And it sounds like no other composer at all, the period. I think that there were other composers who were doing similar things, but nobody had the acerbity, the, the bite. And like I said, that, that feeling of, of, of unease that runs through it all. And that was Shostakovich's own personality. He was an extremely neurotic guy, unbelievably high tension. And boy, does this early music show that. So I want to play this interlude from Katerina Ismailova also known as Lady Macbeth of Mizensk. And we have the Cologne Radio Symphony Orchestra conducted by Mikhail Jurovsky, Jurovsky, however you want to pronounce it, on Capriccio, a wonderful performance. This, this also contains um, the execution of Stepan Razin, which is a wonderful cantata in the style of the 13th Symphony, which will be the topic of another talk. Do not worry. We're going to discuss it. And, and also the two fables after, after Krylov, which are for mezzo-soprano and chorus and orchestra. These are virtually unknown pieces that deserve to be much better known. They're all good music. Early Shostakovich and late Shostakovich. But here is the fourth interlude from Katerina Ismailova. Marvelous stuff. <laughs>
genuine miniature masterpiece among many, many such that Shostakovich wrote. I mean, there are the ballets, there's oh, there's so much music. What a great, great composer he was. And it's so much fun to get to know his work outside of just the usual big symphonies and big concertos to enjoy some of the smaller works. So I hope you got a kick out of it. I certainly did. Keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.